comes on at about 35 to 40 miles an hour. It's coming from the right side. I suspect it's the wheel bearing. It's funny, after about 50 or 60 miles an hour, it's not so noisy. Hello, David here, and the project for today is replacing the wheel bearing on the right front of a 98 Ford Contour. And to do so, you gotta remove the wheel and you also have to remove the steering knuckle. But before you lift the car off the ground, if you don't have an impact wrench, you're gonna have to loosen the, the axle nut. And that's a 32 millimeter. And uh, it's best to do it with the weight of the car on the tire, with the tire on the ground. That'll hold it from turning on you. You don't have to take it off, just loosen it. Might have to stand on it. Let's try the impact gun. Stubborn. I used to handle up my floor jack. Next we need to remove the caliper brackets from the steering knuckle. There's one right here, one on the bottom. They're 15 millimeters. I'm going to squeeze the caliper so I can get it off of the rotor. Gonna hang it from a wire hanging off of the coil spring so I don't stress out the brake hose. Remove the steering knuckle to strut pinch bolt. Unclip the cable support to the wheel speed sensor. Pull this thing out all together. Wheel speed sensor is eight millimeters. Outer tie red end is 15 millimeters. Pitch bolt for the lower ball joint is a Torx T55. And of course there's a nut on the other end. It's an 18 millimeter on the other end. Let's lever out that ball joint. Take a punch and tap that axle loose. Careful not to damage the threads. Got this little uh, divot in the middle for your punch. There we go. All right, it's out. I don't know if you could hear this noise, but you could hear the bearing. Very little movement in there. When I jacked the car up and tried pulling on the wheels, I didn't feel any movement at all. It made it harder for me to diagnose. Next step is to press this hub out of here by pushing on this. Okay, this is a setup on my shop press. Make sure you're supporting the the steering knuckle, not the hub. And make sure the lug nuts aren't hitting the cross frame of your press either. Because you'd be working against yourself and you might strip the threads on the lugs. 
for pushing out the hub I have a 30 millimeter socket that fits the hub almost exactly. It has to be slightly smaller and this is slightly smaller. Make sure it's not bigger because then you'll be fighting against yourself and you actually be pushing on the bearing. I think it's coming. There went. Here's where I'm at. Got the hub. There's part of the bearing. This race has to come out. Most people uh, get an angle grinder, grind away a line and then pound it off with a chisel. Uh, you gotta be careful if you do that not to score the hub. Some people get an acetylene torch, get it so hot that it expands and it'll drop off. I don't have acetylene, I might try that with my map gas. Over here you can see the rest of the bearing in the steering knuckle. Somehow I lost my snap ring that acts as a retainer. You can see the groove is empty. I looked around and I couldn't find it. Maybe I'll sweep the area with a magnet. But I'm going to need that sleeve of the bearing to be used to press in the new bearing. Got to get the snap ring out of here. Ooh. Hey, I'm getting there. Okay, so here's where I'm at. I've got the hub. I'm going to wire wheel out the snap ring recesses because they look a little rusty inside. I've got the old bearing. You have to save this to press in the new bearing because it's the perfect size to match the bearing. So just keep this in your shop by your shop press. And I've got the snap ring. I just wire wheeled all the uh, rust off of this and I lost the other snap ring. It went flying on the shop press. I cannot find it. So I'm going to have to run down to the store and get another one of these. Before I start grinding on that bearing race, I want to see if I could heat it and get it to expand and slip off. Let's see if it's going to work. By the way, the hub was sitting in the freezer overnight, so hopefully that'll give me more tolerance. Nothing doing. And the settling torch would have done the trick, I'm sure. Uh, this is what you want to avoid. You want to avoid scoring that shaft, but it, it's pretty hard not to hit the, uh, the shaft with the uh, cutoff tool. Hopefully it won't cause an accident. My next step is to press the wheel bearing into the steering knuckle. Before you do that, you got to check the bore. Make sure there's no corrosion in there. You might have to wire wheel it or get a half round file and uh, file that corrosion down so it's even with the rest of the bore so the 
wheel bearing will uh, press in easily. You don't want to go crazy on it and, uh, and uh, change the uh, dimensions of the bore. Also, uh, I, uh, I didn't have any trouble with my bore, but I did have some corrosion in the snap ring groove in there, so I wire wheeled both grooves. Uh, you guys might want to fast forward if you want. I'm going to do a little um, lecture on, on snap rings. I was looking for a replacement ring. I noticed they're called retainer rings. In Europe, I think they call them circlips, but this is what they are. And what you need to know is that there's two types. Um, when you're putting a snap ring internally in a bore like that, this is an internal snap ring because these ears that, uh, that cover the holes, they're, they can't interfere with the bore, so they have to be on the inside. The uh, snap rings that go on a shaft, they go around the shaft, and those are called external because these ears are on the outside edges of the snap rings. So I checked all the auto parts stores in my neighborhood, and none of them had a replacement snap ring. I found one on eBay. It was $9 to replace the snap ring after I ordered it. I found that the Ford dealer clear across town had one left and they were $15. So I had to wait uh, almost a week for this to come in. And if you lose your snap ring, uh, it's good to know the specs on them. This is uh, two and a half millimeters thick. Uh, the outside diameter relaxed is 79 and a half millimeters and the bore diameter in which it rests is 75 millimeters so that's the specifications you use when you go hunting for this snap ring and I found one at Granger I'll give you the stock number at Granger the Granger stock number is 38 D is in dog N is in Nancy 99 uh, they were selling them for uh, a five pack for uh, six dollars and 78 cents but they were back ordered for a whole month and I certainly didn't want to wait that long. I'm going to be installing the bearing through this end. So I'm going to put the first snap ring in on this end. And I'm doing that this way because this, uh, this end is, is real easy to rest on my arbor plate. This configuration of arbor plates work perfectly for pressing the bearing out of the steering knuckle. The, uh, the diameter here held this, uh, this part of the steering knuckle in, yet it was wide enough to allow the bearing to come out through this bore. In this case, for pressing the bearing in, it's going to stop at the retaining ring, and I don't need a hole in there. I could just use one arbor plate for that and for a pusher I'm gonna use the old bearing because it's the uh, the right dimension I was concerned that when I I push the bearing in that the old bearing might get stuck in the bore because there's about a uh, I don't know an eighth of an inch or so where you have to push that bearing in to contact the bottom retaining ring so what I did was I ground off about two thousandths of an inch on the uh, leading edge of this bearing. I don't know if you can see that. But uh only came down uh, about uh, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, just because I didn't want it to get stuck. This is a replacement bearing. It's an SKF FW177. Had the bearing in the freezer for a few days just to cut the tolerance down. Should make it easier to slide in. Gonna put some oil in the bore. And put some oil on the bearing. It's real important that you push on the outer edge of the bearing and not the center because you could ruin the bearing. When you 
feel some resistance, that's probably going to be the retaining ring. Yeah, it might be there. I don't want to go too far and break the ring. Nope, need to go further. Yeah, we're there. Make sure when you're pressing the bearing and knuckle over the hub, you have to push on the inner race of the bearing, not the outer race of the bearing. Otherwise, you ruin the bearing. Yeah, it's in. I gotta start installing the steering knuckle by connecting it to the, the bottom of the strut and this blade on the back of the strut goes into this groove right there. And then once I get that in, I could run the pinch bolt in here which goes through the hole in here. That's how you know it's lined up. Torque to 62 foot-pounds. Going to wrestle the drive shaft through the hub. You know, 
know, I might get more motion on the hub if I remove this uh, strut bolt. It's not a strut bolt. Yeah, I do have more motion. Stabilizer length, 26 foot-pounds. Next we'll get the ball joint into its receptacle on the stirring knuckle. I like to use a crowbar for leverage to get the control arm down in place. Got it. 18 millimeter nut on the back side. T55 Torx on the front side. Sixty-two foot pounds on the ball joint lower control arm pinch bolt on models ninety-eight and later. Got to put the wheel speed sensor bracket on the stabilizer link mount. Wheel speed sensor, eight millimeters. Tie right in. Twenty foot pounds. Caliper mounting bolts are fifteen millimeter and they get eighty nine foot pounds. And there's two of them. And don't forget, I depress the piston and the caliper bore of the brake cylinder so you gotta pump up the brakes before you start the car driving or you're gonna swerve to one side. The wheel lug nuts are torqued. All I have to do is torque the axle nut 32 millimeters and it's 200 foot-pounds 1998 and later. Doing 35 miles an hour and it's nice and quiet. I'm going to call this repair job a success. I want to thank you guys and gals for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more great videos from David GPO.